hi everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, before we even get started, I just want to make sure that everyone can hear me and see me um, and that the sound is good. Um, so let's uh, first make sure that that's good. Um, if, you, uh, if you're having an issue, just make sure to, to let us know by typing in the chat on the bottom right. Okay. So uh, thank you again for joining us. Um, I'm Jessica. I'm uh, the Customer Success Manager at MindLift, and we're very, very excited to have you with us here today. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen and um, just while I introduce. So um, give me one moment, please. OK. So um, as I mentioned, uh, today's webinar um, is brought to you by MindLift, uh, by the MindLift Academy, which I'll get to in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, we're doing a webinar on the six keys to success as a remote neurofeedback expert. Um, so thank you very much. Some of you may have met me before. Um, if you haven't, it's really great to have you with us. So just an, an overview about MindLift. Um, MindLift is a uh, home neurofeedback system. We provide a, a platform in which clinicians can do simple and easy to use home-based neurofeedback. We use a music band, which reads the, um, head, which reads the EEG brainwaves um, and feeds this feedback into a mobile app. Your client or your end user can then play games um, and stream videos from YouTube. Um, all the while you as a clinician are monitoring this, um, administering the sessions and tracking this through your therapist guided uh, dashboard. Um, MindLift has really revolutionized the way in which uh, neurofeedback is run today by making it more accessible, uh, cheaper, um, allowing you really as clinicians to reach many more uh, patients and clients, and also of course, increasing your own revenues. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this webinar is brought to you by the MindLift Academy. MindLift Academy is an initiative that was uh, built and put together by MindLift um, in response to a growing need by clinicians to really um, get uh, neurofeedback or remote neurofeedback into their clinics and uh, really get on board with uh, neurofeedback in general. We've put this together to really provide you as the clinicians with all the tools and support that you need uh, to really build a successful neurofeedback clinic. So as a part of this, we are uh, going to be having live webinars such as this one, um, where we'll touch on different topics, both clinical related, as well as business and marketing related. Um, we also will be having, or we currently actually provide professional one-on-one -on -one consultation sessions. We work with um, very experienced um, top mile of clinicians who provide these consultations for other uh, clinicians within our network. Um, and again, these are either both uh, clinical oriented or also uh, business growth related. Lastly, we also have enriched materials such as blog posts, marketing materials, monetization playbooks, and more to really give you all the tools that you need, as I mentioned, to, to get uh, your clinic started and thriving. Um, this is also a really great opportunity to mention that if there's anyone here that uh, thinks that they may have an idea or would really uh, have something that would benefit the MindLift community, feel free to reach out to us, let us know, and we'd be happy to collaborate and work with you on a project. So I'm now going to introduce our wonderful speaker for today, uh, Dr. Trish Lee. Uh, Dr. Trish Lee is uh, the director of Lee Brain and Spine, a really thriving, successful clinic in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. One of our top mind of clinicians, and she's really taken MindLift and incorporated it into her clinic um, and built incredible office systems around it. Um, she's done this in a very, very effective and interesting way, and she is here to share some of her insights and her tips with us today. So uh, thanks so much to Trish. Um, she is a super qualified neurofeedback clinician. She has treated people with a wide variety of challenges, uh, such as ADHD, anxiety, and more. She is also the creator of Harness Your Brain, which is an educational program, which she uh, helps clients really uh, improve their brain functioning and meet goals that they wish to. And on top of all of this, she's also a consultant and a professional presenter at Neurofeedback Experts course, uh, where she actually coaches other business owners um, on how to actually uh, get their business uh, up and running and how to make it 
successful. So she is highly qualified and she'll be speaking with us today. Uh, Trish, thank you so much for, for being with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. But just before we, we uh, move over to Trish, I just want to mention again that um, we have a chat window on the bottom right of your screen. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to write them in over there. We will have a 10 to 15 minute session, a Q&A session at the end, and we'll try to get through all the questions. Um, but for now, we're going to pass it over to Trish. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm truly honored to be here today to be able to present this information to you. Um, as Jessica knows, this is very important to me. As a neurofeedback practitioner, I created my consulting business because my mission is to get more people across the globe using neurofeedback so that they can regulate their brain's performance and become the best version of themselves. And for me to be able to do that, to be able to speak with other neurofeedback practitioners and encourage them to be able to use really strong office systems and a business model that is based on neuroscience also, so that we can, as, I, as my tagline is, change brains, improve lives, and make money doing it, uh, it's a huge goal of mine. So I'm really just so excited to be here. And it's one thing for Jessica to tell you that MindLift has revolutionized neurofeedback, and she might not remember this about my story, but I've been looking for a remote neurofeedback system to add to my practice for a very long time, for years. And I really wanted one, but I just couldn't offer one to my patients because I didn't find one that I thought was user-friendly and effective. And as we continue to talk through this discussion, you'll hear me say the word science so many times that it's really important to me that there's efficacy behind this system. And MindLift blew my doors off when I was first introduced to it. And I am so excited to be able to offer it to my current patients, my new ones, and I'm attracting a whole uh, other body of patients and clients. And that's why I'm gonna share with you today. Uh, so I'm gonna share my slides with you. I have also been a college professor for almost 25 years, believe it or not. So hopefully I'll be able to use my expertise in teaching to keep you engaged and to keep us moving along. Before we get started, there's slides with bulleted points, but I encourage you to get some paper or a journal or something to write down some thoughts or ideas because what I'm sharing with you today is from my neurofeedback expert program. What that program is, is it's a five module online workshop that teaches people strong clinical skills, but also a business model that is very effective to scale a business quickly and make it very profitable. So get out some paper so you can write down some of these ideas. And then if you become interested, I'm always happy to help more practitioners through my online course. And my website is on the last slide. It's just Dr. Trish Lee. Dot com and it's L-E-I-G-H. Okay, so I'm going to share my slides and let's get, let's get rolling. Uh, I entitled this presentation today, The Six Keys to Success as a Remote Neurofeedback Expert. And the six keys are surrounding the idea of the five W's and one H growth model. So if you remember from your um, literature class or your uh, English language arts class for anybody in the States from when you were young, all good investigations and all good stories answer these six questions. And that's why I have entitled this slide and this presentation, The Six Keys. So basically what we are going to do in our limited time together is we are going to answer who, what, where, when, why, and how surrounding the idea of growing the most awesome remote neurofeedback practice that's based on neuroscience and strong business systems. And if you've ever interacted with me, you will know that I like to have an answer for everything. Clearly I can't have an answer for everything, but I can make sure I have an answer for most things within my office process. And I'm gonna share a lot of them with you right now. Okay, so let's just dig right in. The first who is who do you serve? And the first idea here is we're going to talk about niche clientele. 
So I want you to think about just for a moment or write it down on your piece of paper to think about and consider later on in even more depth, who is your ideal customer avatar? Now I find with a lot of the neurofeedback practitioners that I work with in my consulting business, they are trying to appeal to everyone and in doing so, they are not attracting anyone, never mind the people they really want to work with. And I really think that's a classic mistake that people make. And, you know, it's founded on the idea because neurofeedback has such widespread utility that we can use it for so many different challenges or just for peak performance. But what I want you to think about is who do you, you personally, who do you love working with? So write it down or write the question down so you can think about it later. But typically there's, you know, one clientele or two or three, and I would stay there two or three if you're really going to be able to market towards those people. So in my office at Lee Brain and Spine, we primarily market to people with ADHD and anxiety. And most of you are probably following my thought process if you're a neurofeedback practitioner. That's because those brain patterns exist on the opposite side of the continuum. So an ADHD brain is using excessive slowing and an anxiety brain is using excessive fastness in terms of brain processing speed. So when we market to those two extremes, most times then we appeal to all people in between. So that's just one tip if you are cannot figure out who you should market to, to start pulling people in. That's a really good one that I teach large module in the Neurofeedback Expert Program. But if you love working with people who have head injuries, then concussions and mild TBIs might be your thing. If you love working with athletes and peak performers, then that's your niche. Really pare it down to your niche. But at the same time, and this goes back to the issue I was just talking about, who are you skilled at working with? Now, many times in neurofeedback, we all have different licenses. So many different licenses that can be able to achieve board certification in neurofeedback. But you need to remember that within your license, you actually have a skill set of working with people and who you love to work with and your skill set probably overlaps. So that might be a nice place to stick to try to pull in some niche clientele. Who do you work with now? Are those people the same as the top two bulleted points? Or is there a way that we can think about attracting new patients using remote neurofeedback? And we're going to visit that in just a second. Who would you like to attract? So in my office also, I work with many people who have sensory processing disorders. And that kind of developed as a niche service over the last five years because I got excited about some of the people that we were working with. Um, people with tinnitus in particular has become a real big niche service for us, ringing in the ears. Um, they're a great clientele to work with because there's nothing else out there that can really serve them and help them get rid of the ringing. And neurofeedback is incredibly powerful to be able to do so. So I started doing that and I wanna be able to attract more and more people with tinnitus. So then I started advertising for tinnitus. So you're, you're following me here. Who do you love to work with? Who are you good at working with? And who would you like to attract? Now, in consideration of remote neurofeedback, what need can rem remote neurofeedback serve in your practice? So by adding MindLift, if you've already added it, hopefully you have figured out that there's needs that can be served differently by MindLift than by in-office neurofeedback which I also have a very large in-office neurofeedback practice. Uh, so I've combined the two of them. I'm gonna share with you in a few minutes how I've done that. But for example, challenging behaviors, we work with a lot of kids that really have a lot of challenging behaviors. And what that means, that's the polite way of saying they're very disruptive in the office. They're disruptive in the waiting room. Uh, they are really loud. They're moving around a lot. So kids with challenging behaviors, and honestly, we also serve people from far away. So it also adds into the distance because people are traveling very far with their kids with challenging behaviors. They get to my office, their kids have been in the car for an hour or two, and now they're extra um, disruptive because they have been contained for so long. But 
adding MindLift and now being able to use MindLift to serve those kids has really worked out well. Their parents love it because they don't have to travel to the office and they can have their kids do more sessions and it's easy for the kids to use and they incentivize them with their electronics uh, like all parents. I also am the parent to six children. Um, so I can speak about integrating MindLift at home because I make all of my children, uh, actually I don't have to make them anymore. I used to have to make them use remote neurofeedback, but now most of them enjoy it. So that works out well. But so you get the point, challenging behaviors can really be difficult in the office. Remote neurofeedback can serve that need. Mobility is another patient um, type that you can really serve using MindLift. In my office, we have people who have had drastic head injuries and are confined to a wheelchair. Um, we work with people with multiple sclerosis. It's very difficult for them to get around and transportation tends to be difficult. So some of our patients with MS have to use Uber or they have to get their friends to bring them in all the time for sessions. When we added MindLift, it just solved those mobility issues for those people. They didn't have to worry about how they were going to get to our office and they didn't have to bother their friends anymore. So it really has served a huge need there as well. I've already talked about distance and clearly this is a no brainer, pun intended, but distance has been a challenge for m many of our patients for a long time. People really travel far to come see me and now they will come for one initial visit and sometimes they'll come for more visits, but we can hook them up with MindLift and provide awesome service to them. Frequency, and I'm gonna talk about this in another slide in a minute, so I'll just skim over the point, but some patients or clients need greater frequency. You may know that at the outset of care and you may not, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but the if you start someone in your office with in-office neurofeedback, a really beautiful way to be able to increase frequency without increasing the hassle for the person is using MindLift for remote neurofeedback. Lastly is pricing. So, you know, you've already heard me talk about having a strong business model that of course is based on neuroscience. Pricing or the investment that a person is able to make, and I always call it their resources, and I know I use that on one of the slides coming up, but people only have so much time, energy, and money that they can invest in our services. Sometimes that's a lot of each one of those, sometimes it's a little. And what MindLift has served for us is we have been able to create levels of neurofeedback service and combination programs so that we can offer different price points for different people. And it's really worked out really well. So families that might've told us before that they can't join us for care, now they can. And that's really awesome because like I told you, my goal is to help people. Okay, so who can you cater with specifically with remote neurofeedback? You can attract clients that have large families. And again, most we work with many young kids and as you know, as a neurofeedback practitioner, brains don't fall far from the tree, I always say. So if a child has ADHD or some developmental challenges, and we won't go into that, but some of those issues are hereditary, which means that there's other family members that can really benefit from neurofeedback. But when you only have in-office neurofeedback, that can be, really be confining in terms of the finances. And I'm going to share with you my model that includes large families. So now big families come in and they are so excited to be able to do remote neurofeedback and they don't have to come to the office a lot and their whole family can be served. We work with lots of busy and independent business people, it tends to be, um, who are just so busy. So uh, this might be your high beta person, if you know what I mean. And there's literature that talks about, you know, high beta perpetuating itself, but busy and really independent drivers. And, you know, I'm kind of a driver myself, so I can relate, but um, busy independent people want the care. They really want to optimize their brain performance, but their brain pattern is making it so that it's difficult for them to commit to that care. We work with people who run huge corporations and the reason they can commit to their care is because we can make combination programs of in-office neurofeedback and remote neurofeedback. And you know, these people are feeling awesome. They're able to, this is a segue to the next bullet, they're able to take their system with them when they travel. A lot of times these 
people who are running big uh, businesses and are just busy, busy travel a lot too. So now they can take their system with them when they travel. Another really cool thing that I've just started to delve into and I'm really excited about is that I'm creating relationships with other institutions and organizations. And again, in my neurofeedback expert workshop, I teach you how to build these collaborations with different organizations. And it is a process, it's not an event, um, but I'm establishing a relationship and building this relationship with some of these really big organizations um, in where I am in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, it's called the Research Triangle Park. So there's lots of big um, companies here and my goal is to get MindLift into all of them. And I have a plan uh, to be able to do that. And you can do that too. You can take your MindLift headbands and explain to institutions and organizations the benefit of peak performance and preventing burnout and stress and anxiety, which is at astronomical levels across the whole world these days. So, um, getting remote neurofeedback into organizations is a way for us to serve humanity through neurofeedback. So that's really exciting. Okay, current clients. I have current clients that when they come into my office, they really have strong needs. So I perform a brain map in the office, but you could use your graphs from your mind lift system to be able to gauge when a person has really strong needs based upon their baseline information. And what that means is they are going to need a lot of care. So when strong needs are seen, remote neurofeedback is a way that we can provide daily sessions and high frequency of training. Uh, this leads to some patients that come in the office have a weak response to training. Thankfully, it tends to be few people and it really tends to be um, kids who are, are on the autistic spectrum. We work with a lot of children who have those types of needs. High beta clients really can, you know, be their own worst enemy with that where they're perpetuating a lifestyle that creates more high beta. But what that means is during their training sessions in the office, you can see that their brain is struggling to optimize itself. And then that becomes an opportunity to offer remote neurofeedback for those people and a need for increased frequency of training. The way that I offer my program is very unique and it's based on neuroscience, but it's offered across a year, a year's worth of care to have enough time to create that shift in brain functioning, to organize the brain pattern and then stabilize it. And as we're moving through that journey and I'm decreasing frequency of care, I can see through my graphs and through your mind lift graphs that there is an increased need for higher frequency of training. And this is a person who is not going to be able to kind of wean off of neurofeedback as a support. And again, it's difficult for people in terms of time, energy, and money to come into the office all the time. Remote neurofeedback serves that need. I've already told you that we work with a lot of people. Um, my filter is that if people live within a 50 mile radius of our office, we provide provide combination programs to them. And if people live beyond that, then they can take advantage of just remote neurofeedback. And I want to be able to build a relationship with people and be able to affect change as much as possible. And that's why we have that filter so we can get them into their office so they can know, like, and trust us as we say in the business. But I'm going to show you a method to do that if you don't have people in your office too. But it can be people with challenges or just peak performers. And, you know, there's a whole, uh, bunch of science and there's anecdotal stories of peak performers in every uh, area of athletics, people in business like Tony Robbins that are taking advantage of neurofeedback for peak performance. So that's a really great niche clientele for you also and families of clients. So parents of children, and again, apples don't fall far from the tree or siblings. And this is really adding mind lift has really served families because it used to be kind of cost prohibitive because people couldn't afford to sign themselves up or their other children up for our large in-office programs. And now we're able to provide the services for them. So it works out beautifully. Okay, so we're still on who of our questions. Now we're gonna segue though to who does what. And I know this slide is a little loaded, but honestly, it's food for thought. And the reason it's loaded is because if you are a sole practitioner, 
then all of these roles are yours. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, right? D depending upon the way you look at it. I like having control of the roles, so I know they get done well, but of course then that makes it so that your growth trajectory might be stifled for what you want. So my goal today is to have you think about who is doing what in your office. So if it's you, I still encourage you to think about every role that exists in your office so that you make sure you're playing all of the roles. I find many times when I'm working in my consulting practice with neurofeedback practitioners that they just aren't doing some of the roles because it's just them. So, and I'm gonna tell you a few of them in just a minute, but you know, all the roles need to get done. And so the goal is as you grow, you're able to farm out some of those roles to another team member. So the question for you is which roles do you like to play and which ones would you be happy to have someone else do for you? And that's always been my filter. I'm trying to, I'm successfully trying to build what I call a lifestyle business because I have so many children. So I really barely go to our office. If anything, I go on Friday morning and sometimes Monday morning for three hours. And beyond that, I have my associate and I chuckle because my associate is my husband who would probably die right now if he knew I was calling him my associate. But he is a more novice of a neurofeedback practitioner. And so I've been teaching him the ropes, but there are still things that I need to think about. But now I think about those things and I communicate those things to him. He's in the office all the time. So his goal is to comprehend what I'm teaching him so that he can share that. And he's really doing awesome. He has come a long way and he's, he's really doing great. So he's about to be board certified and hopefully he'll take on the role as practitioner also. But the idea is that I love to think about people's brain maps. I love to think about their graphs. And I'm going to show you a couple in just a second. Um, so that's what I want to be able to do. And I communicate with my team, which is really enjoyable to, for me. And then they communicate with our patients. And very rarely will I communicate with patients. And I do offer patients webinars. Um, and if you're interested in more information from me, I have a YouTube channel where I have been making short videos for patients and practitioners so that they can go there and watch short video clips to learn more about neurofeedback and how to deliver it really well. But that's my way of if people have questions, I make a video and I put it on YouTube so that I don't have to be in conversations all the time. My hubby's in conversation all the time. So that's how we collaborate in the office so that we're not both doing the same role and really it works out really well. Then we also have a main technician who works under me and I communicate with her. I'll do it over video conference. Um, I don't really even go into the office a lot to meet with her. We do it remotely, but she's able to look at the graphs and evaluate them a bit and organize them for my review. And so she's really been able to think about that, but I have the last pass on the thinking. My front desk um, assistant, her name is Whitney, and I know people from across the globe call our office for advice about neurofeedback, so maybe some of you have done that, but her role is client liaison. She helps people with getting signed up for care, um, any questions about you know, if someone should take advantage of the psychologist that we have in our office, she answers those questions. Yes, she will ask me for my input or if the question is for me, she'll ask me and then she will share that with the patient. But she basically structures everybody's programs and encourages them through it. So that's her role. Her role is answering the phone and scheduling sessions and making sure everybody is compliant and coming in. She takes payments. That's her role. So there's really no overlap of roles. So for you to have a growth trajectory, and this is another activity for this slide, think about what you want your practice to look like in one year, two year, five years. Uh, we are, my, husband, my husband's a chiropractor and we are hiring another chiropractor who's joining us in uh, two weeks now, I think, but we were talking yesterday. And if any of you work with your spouse, I'm sure you'll be able to appreciate this. Well, my hubby said he's going to, this gentleman's going to come in. And I said, okay, cool. What's the 
what's the growth plan? And of course, being my husband, he goes, growth plan? What do you mean growth plan? What kind of growth plan do you have for neurofeedback? And you know, I quickly rattled off the growth that I have achieved over the last five years, which adding mind lift was one very important aspect of that. And then I, you know, then I entered into some brainstorming with him. That's probably the nice way of saying that I had him think about the things that we could do for the growth model of this new chiropractor. So growth models are really important to be able to think, okay, you're going to add this service or you're going to add another person. Uh, how are you going to cover the cost of it? Basically, that's part of the growth model. And how are you going to ensure that it succeeds? Okay, so let's keep rolling here. What does your program look like? If you write nothing down, write this down because it's very important. Programs should be systematized yet individualized. So every person who comes into our office looks like they're doing the same thing. So they join us for care in the exact same way. Program duration is the same. The investment is the same. Um, but we do have scaled pricing and it's very deliberate. And I'm sure I'll share a little, um, some ditties with you in just a minute about that. But we do progress monitoring on a schedule for each client. We have remote meetings on a schedule. We have a continuum of care. So when people join us, they will have in-office neurofeedback. And many times that's in combination with remote neurofeedback. And then we will, like I've already said, decrease their frequency and we have a continuum of care that in the end, if they have the mind lift system, they can use the MuseCom headband independently. But we always try to keep people in care. And that's very important because from a marketing standpoint, it is much easier to keep patients in care, keep them happy at smaller levels and then have them refer other people to you than it is to have to go out and find new clients all the time. So keeping people in care, getting them to refer is really, really important for a strong business model. Okay, so that's the systematized. Now, individualized means everybody looks like they're doing the same thing because the process is the same, but nobody's doing the exact same thing. Everybody's care is individualized. So like I said, I look at people's graphs and I've taught my husband to be able to do that and our main technician. So three of us are able to think about the graph. So what will happen now is, you know, my hubby will shoot me a text or uh, our technician will shoot me an email that says, I see this in the graph. What do you think? And I usually it's yes, I agree. Let's do this and we'll shift their protocol or we will change their site or we will change their thresholds or things like that. Everybody's care is individualized for their success. So everybody's training and progress looks and feels different, but within the systematized program. And of course, we need to make sure people are reaching their behavioral gains and that those are measured. And it's going to be idiosyncratically, meaning that we wanna make sure that the gains of neurofeedback are showing up in people's lives. People ask me all the time, we offer consultations. So when people come in, if they, it's only if they feel like they need a consultation, we don't push the consultation. So we do them rarely, but people will say, you know, are you actually able to help people have differences in their life? And of course I say, we wouldn't have a full office if we didn't. Like, yeah, it's great to see improvements in these brain trend graphs, but if that wasn't rolling over into how that's making people's lives better, we wouldn't have a full thriving practice. So first of all, you need to be able to think about that. And secondly, you need to be able to share that. And I'm gonna show you a little bit more about that in just a minute. Okay, the next two slides of the what do you offer is my neurofeedback expert formula. So it's a five module online course. And these next two slides are basically the eight primary lessons that you will know more about uh, than you ever thought you could. And you get everything you need to pull them off um, in the neurofeedback expert form formula. Today, I wanna introduce these thoughts to you. And they're in this presentation because I think they are essential, which is why I created an entire online workshop surrounding them. So uh, when Jessica and I first talked about doing this webinar, this has to be in here because this is how you can create your thriving practice. It's the what that is the most important. So 
What do you do to attract new clients? A community awareness program is very important or you'll have to pay for marketing for the rest of your life. Not that that's bad because you can do Google AdWords to create awareness and that will attract people. They'll know that you exist, but it may not make them want to work with you. What community awareness is, is building strong community partnerships over time. And I have a system for that, but you can think about that yourself right now and think about in my town, who would be the strongest community partner? And maybe you're already thinking about organizations like we talked about a few slides ago that you could partner with to incorporate MindLift right into their, into their office. But maybe it's also one of our strong community partners is a therapy practice that offers speech language pathology, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. And they work with lots of kids and adults. And, you know, these people have big challenges and for those of uh, their clients that aren't making the gains in the time frame, I've taught the therapist that it's because their brain pattern is really stuck in a negative feedback loop. So now they will refer people over and they've been doing that for over five years. So I constantly get referrals from this therapy company because they know that we are here. They know we do an awesome job and that we have a tight process, which what that means is we get people their outcomes that they're looking for, but they also enjoy coming to us. So you need to let your community know that you offer these services and that you're the expert in town offering neurofeedback. What do you do to convert interested prospective clients? One of my favorite things about the Neurofeedback Expert Program is the psychology of purchasing. And I've taken many, many trainings on the psychology of purchasing. And I think it's a fun exercise to think about for yourself, what's the last, you know, biggest purchase you made? And what made you purchase it? And many times it's because that company used the psychology of purchasing to get you in the door and then to help you convert. And there's basically 12 different triggers in the psychology of purchasing, but I'm gonna share my favorite with you today. My favorite is curiosity. You make the person want to know what their brain performance looks like. And it's pretty wild because once you introduce the idea of that your brain performance is driving your challenges or making it so that you can't feel and perform the way that you want to, to the patient, they want to know, hmm, what is my brain doing that is making it so that I can't attend? Or how can my brain be creating anxiety? And again, you can use your mind lift graphs to share that information with people if you don't do QEG brain mapping. So the curiosity of what is going on in my brain is really strong enough to get people to begin the stages of the conversion process within the office. Which, which leads to the customer relationship management system. But before I move on, I just wanted to share one or two more. Um, one more that is really important is urgency. So I'm sure you've seen this, that's why sales, if you see sales for your favorite store, your favorite product, sales only last you know, a short amount of time. And what it does is it creates urgency and scarcity. So what one of the programs that I teach neurofeedback practitioners is to launch their neurofeedback programs on a seasonal basis so that you have a reason to create urgency and scarcity. So a lot of my program is creating reasons to communicate with people so that you can stay first and foremost in their mind on a service that they want to take advantage of, but they haven't reached that tipping point. One other part of this aspect of the psychology purchasing, which also goes into customer relationship, is sunken costs. And true story, I went to the Department of Motor Vehicles yesterday, two days ago, I've actually been there twice in a row. My son's getting his learner's permit and the computer system was down for anybody in the States, I'm sure you can relate, but there were people there, we got there at 4.15 p.m. and there were people there that had been sitting there since 7.30 a.m. And of course, at first glance, you say, why would a person ever sit there from 7.30 a.m. if the computers didn't come online till 4.15 p.m.? The reason is sunken costs. 
So of course, at 7.30 a.m., they thought the computers were gonna come back on in 15 minutes, a half hour, an hour went by, 8.30, they're still there, and they're like, it's probably gonna come on soon. So by 9.30 or 10.30, now they already have three hours of waiting in, and that is a long time waiting that they don't wanna waste. So they kept waiting the entire day until 4.15 p.m., and honestly, it was closing. Most of the people never got served, which is why I still had to go back. But after waiting an eight hour day, they never even got served and they sat there because of sunken costs. The way that we use that in the office is we take deposits for every step of our process. So if a person wants a consultation, it's a hundred dollar deposit. For our QEG brain map, it's a hundred dollar deposit. They have to put a deposit down on whatever neurofeedback program that they, I have recommended for them and that they are signing up for by putting that deposit down and it's paid forward, they're always invested a little every step of the way in our program. And it really helps people to move to the next step because of sunken costs. And it's completely refundable. So if people don't want to move forward, they get their money back. But just the act of putting the deposit down helps them commit to keep moving forward. And it's totally mind blowing that it works. If you uh, implement one thing, that would be a really good one. You could do a $10 deposit. It doesn't even matter the amount. It's just uh, having the fact that they're committed. Okay, so what do you do to keep clients engaged and enthused? And that's a customer relationship management system. At first glance and for today's um, time together because it will be limited, we want to be able to send emails and to communicate with people and send them information. And then it really leads into progress tracking. We track progress and we have short check-ins that are five minutes long every seven sessions in the office and every month and a half for remote neurofeedback. And this way we always have touch points. What do you do to ensure client success? I call them brain shift programs. I've already told you about them. They're one year in length with decreasing frequency so that we can make sure we've created a positive feedback loop of change. Okay, uh, let's keep going here. So what is the investment for your program? You really need to know what your profit margin is and why. So I have a pricing model and it's scaled pricing like I just said. So the more sessions a person needs, the lower the cost is. Um, and we'll get into it in a few minutes when we talk about remote neurofeedback specifically. But make sure that you're not giving neurofeedback away for peanuts. Another mission of mine is to standardize care to high levels because I literally think this is the most awesome service that is available to people and it has such value you can charge for it. What steps do you use in your process to keep clients engaged? And it pig piggybacks off of what we were talking about on the last slide but your office systems have to be smooth and they have to be salient. What salient means is they make sense to people. And this can incorporate the paperwork aspect that's the last bullet on this slide. Every single step in the process leads to the next step. And I call them sound bites. So in the consultation, I'm not telling the potential client about everything. I'm just telling them about the next step and making them want to get the next step. Then when they come back for that initial evaluation, I'm making them want to know what their brain map or what their graphs would look like, which makes them want to come back for the next session. Then on their first session, we make them want to come back for their second session. We build momentum around the graphs. There's a piece of paperwork we give a patient at every single one of these steps, and it really keeps them engaged. One piece of paperwork that works great is a goal sheet. We have people tell us what their three top goals are on their when they come back for their evaluation. And this way we keep the forest for the trees. Okay, we're going to look at progress monitoring with scientific data on this uh, slide. And I just absolutely love these trend graphs. I, I really love them. I love communicating to patients about them. So this is a real patient and this is someone who is engaged in, uh, I can't share exactly what he's engaged in, but he has created the most popular video game. He's one of the creators across the world. Um, and he's working hard and he is enjoying using MindLift to keep his brain calm and focused as he works on the work that he loves so much. 
But on his first session, which was from December 6th, you can see how the amplitude of theta is starts and it, it is up at around four. And honestly, I would say 4.1. Another tidbit is that specific numbers help keep people engaged. 4.1 and it decreases to 2.1. Four, we'll call it, or 2.3. And you can see theta has decreased as an excellent response to training in this first graph. And you can also see that alpha increased over high beta. So I'm sure you know that that means that brain fog is clearing up, uh, a more relaxed state and a decrease in anxiety is happening within the session, but there's a strong need for the session at the beginning of the round. In the second graph from session number 31, you can see that theta is now starting at three and it's going up to about 3.2, 3.3. It decreases across the session again. We see alpha peaking up above high beta on and off throughout the session. So we see that we have this downward shift in the different brain waves across trend graphs. And you can do so much more with trend graphs. If you're not using your mind lift graphs like this, start using them. They are so exciting. It will keep you engaged in your patient's care. And then when you share them with people, they are gonna be so excited about their care. Okay, so this is a no brainer. Um, where to provide services. So clearly I've already told you about the combination program about adding remote neurofeedback versus having an independent program, which is the first bullet. But what I want to remind you is that progress monitoring has to happen. So if you don't have a system for this, you need to create one because this is the way that you will keep people engaged and enthused around their care. So you can do progress monitoring by phone. We do that all the time. We do it by video chat, we do it by email, and we do it by webinar. So it's a way to keep people engaged, but you also wanna keep it easy for you and you know affordable or cost effective for you also. Customer care, if people are in a combined program, that typically happens in the office, but we can take payments and answer any questions over the phone. And then if people need technical assistance, we're always happy to help by video chat. Okay, hopefully you're still with me because we are now going on to when to offer. Um, and this slide's important to me, and I don't know if any of you have had an experience like mine. It can be tricky offering remote neurofeedback. Um, and I know the, a, another thing my partner in crime, my hubby's always worried about is having our in-office numbers go down because we added remote neurofeedback. And the way we've done that, that has not happened. But I will tell you, I played with a couple of things that I didn't like and I've gotten rid of. Um, so when to offer it can be important. And it really depends on the patient or the client. So like I told you, if people are close by, we always include a component of in-office care for a combination program. If people are far away, we always do remote care, um, but we have a combination of the two. The thing that I found difficult is to make a recommendation for both of them for people who live nearby. And I tried to do that, but I'm covering a lot of ground in the evaluation meetings, or my husband is too. And so now, unless people really know about it and want it at the outset, we introduce it just a session or two later and people want it then really bad without getting confused and um, not understanding what's what. So you can either, either add it right at the outset if that feels right for you, for the person, or if you wanna hold off, you can introduce it two to four sessions later in your in-office program and people are just so excited to take you up on it. And you can introduce it when the scientific data is there. If you look at those trend graphs and you see that there's still strong needs, you could say to a person, you know, we really need to get you using remote neurofeedback for more care. And you show them the graph that shows them that they either show regression in their brain performance or they show a struggle to optimize brain performance. Use your science. It is, you know, I could tell you so many stories where people, uh, didn't want to continue with care just because they felt like they hadn't seen the gains show up yet. And I'm sure if you do neurofeedback, you know that this happens a lot. Usually that's early in care. Um, but when you show them the graphs and you say, look, the reason it hasn't shown up is because we still have a long way to go 
but we can add remote neural feedback to get you there faster, that excites people. And again, I've already talked about transition points that if there's strong, a slow response to training, if you haven't reached their desired outcomes or if their resources are limited, time, energy, and money, then you can transition people to remote neural feedback and we do that all the time. People will tell me that they're maxed out on driving to the office. And I say that that's no problem. We have the solution for you. Um, or if they can't afford the bigger programs in our office, home neural feedback's a great fit for them. So this is the when of how to offer it to people. There's always a way to do it. You can do it based upon science and based upon the person's needs. Okay. So why include it? And hopefully you're already super excited and passionate about adding remote neural feedback, but really it's to increase your reach and to serve more people and increase your abundance. And, you know, lifestyle practice for me is one of abundance. And what that means is that I can get paid what I deserve to be paid so that I can share that money and those resources with my community and with uh, humankind. So abundance isn't just about a get rich quick scheme. It's about doing what you love, helping people, and also feeling safe and sound and being able to sleep at night because your bills are paid, your needs are taken care of, and you're just having fun helping people. That's abundance to me. So again, it's we've talked about most of these things incidentally that I've told you, but if there's a need for increased frequency, then we need to introduce remote neurofeedback. Um, if there is a need for continuum of care, which I think there always is, people need combination programs sometimes, transitions like we've talked about, or sometimes they need a tool that they themselves can use. And MindLift plays that role. A lot of times people are like, what can I do at home? And this serves that need, so it really can increase your reach. And it creates accessibility and flexibility. So you have remote access to all of these scientific graphs. People have the ability to schedule their sessions flexibly while still being part of a tribe. And if you know Seth Godin, the popular author's work, and his book is called Tribes, People need to feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. So they will join you for care, yes, to fix whatever problems they have going on or to decrease their symptoms or to increase how they feel and perform, but they want to be part of something whether they know it or not. That's why you have to include these programs in the way that I'm talking about so that they feel like they're part of your tribe. And when people start communicating back with you, you'll get really excited when you see that those efforts that you've made are creating that. Um, okay, so let's keep going real quick. We're gonna wrap it up. How to add successfully. It's based on neuroscience. So if you've heard the adage, healer, heal thyself, that means start using your mind lift system yourself. Can't believe how many people don't use their home neurofeedback system while they're recommending it for others. And like I told you, um, all eight of us are using it around here and I absolutely love it and my brain graphs can prove it because they are quantifiable, they're quantitative, they're measurable, they give you baselines and they show you the outcomes that you're moving towards or that you have achieved. It's progress that you can see and you can interpret based on neuroscience for your clients and your patients. You can build a strong business model with a large profit margin that serves people. So you can use a rental program, which many people do. They rent their systems out for about $500 a month. What I've chosen to do is to have an equipment purchase plus a service contract. So we have people purchase their whole equipment package through us but we honestly, we sell it at cost and we make a little money up front. And again, sunken costs. And then we have a service contract with them. And mainly that's because I don't wanna have to deal with any technical issues surrounding equipment. And so people know if something breaks, they buy another one. If they need more sensors, they purchase them through us. 
Um, and it works out great for me because nobody calls for technical questions, which is exactly what I want. And I don't have to worry about getting equipment back and worrying about what shape it's in. And we uh, offer our program for $500 a month per family. And the reason we made it per family is because some of the kids were kind of stressed out because they were the only ones who had to go, the only one in their family who had to go do their brain games. And when we opened it up to the entire family could use it, compliance of the individuals that we really want to work with have has gone way up and it's awesome. And like I've already told you, my business model is basically technician assisted. Um, and with the help of my husband, it, I don't have to go to work ever, but I do think about people's graphs, but I have a process for that. And it's really easy and fun for me to help people. And if you want to scale your business, that's the way to go. Um, have an answer for everything. Strong office systems, easy equipment, purchase and setup. We have a really easy peasy process for that. Everything's systematized so we don't have to worry about who's doing what, yet we individualize their care. Um, we use the dashboard consistently and in a really wise manner. We're always in it. It's basically always up on my, my patient liaisons, computer and my technician's computer. And then if I ever have a question, they have my answer within seconds. So really we always have it up and we're using it um, very efficiently. We can make recommendations for the different games and activities. Hopefully you're doing this for your clients and I'll give you one quick takeaway here is that many of those high data people will find it challenging um, to play the games and in the movies when it darkens that can be stressful for them and based on neuroscience if you train with your eyes closed there'll be an increase in alpha which will serve their training the response to training so many times we have people and honestly i like to do this also is use the turbulence app to start with their eyes closed and that creates a reduction in the feedback that they are achieving as they their brain responds to the feedback. So it's less sound rather than more. And that really works for a lot of high beta people. And when I make that recommendation for them, I have them try all the games and all the activities and choose which ones they like and which ones they find more challenging. But then if they're having difficulty kind of getting rolling, I have them do that for the first couple sessions while they're trying the other games. After that, I have them pick the game that they find most challenging and that the one they find easiest and they use them intermittently so they can have more challenging sessions and easier ones. And then, like I told you, we have scheduled progress checkups every month and a half on a schedule. OK, so moving towards wrapping up because we're out of time, just revisiting this model. Make sure you're working with clients you'd love to work with and that you have a strong way of attracting them to you through marketing and advertising and community awareness so that you can be in a practice that you love because being confident and being able to communicate is a foundational skill in, in the who. Effective, efficient, and efficacious remote neurofeedback. That's the what. You need to Trust your mind lift system, know that it's working awesome by looking into these graphs and being able to communicate it with people so that you know that you are truly affecting change in their brain pattern. Uh, the where is anywhere and everywhere. And that's the beautiful aspect of including remote neurofeedback. The when is now, it's a perfect time to add and to start really growing your remote neurofeedback practice because people need this more than ever. Uh, I know the studies in the United States at least show that, which I think it's sad that there are 53% of brains are have mental health disorders, people of course, but I think of them as brain patterns. So there's less people with an optimal brain pattern than there are with people with dysregulated brain patterns. That means now is the time because most challenges that people are suffering from in the areas of cognition, psychological challenges, pain, they are wrapped up in these brain patterns. Now's your time to change them. Um, why? Because we want to extend your reach, create abundance for everybody and serve clients, get them back on track, becoming the best authentic version of themselves so that they can increase their quality of life and uh, raise the alpha in the room. Like I always say, you, you probably know that brains attune to each other. So 
if you can help people regulate their brain pattern, that literally can be a ripple effect for change. So it's really, really important. And how easily and profitably. Um, okay, so I'm gonna wrap up and take my slides down, but on the last slide, thank you so much for your time and your attention. I know uh, time's very uh, short for most people. If you'd like more information about my programs, they're at drtrishlee.com. Um, I'm having a beautiful new website made. It'll be up in the next few days. And there's complimentary lesson there for you. If you put your email in, you can get that complimentary lesson. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee. Um, that was really informative um, and super interesting. And I'm sure everyone uh, enjoyed it as much as I did. So thank you so much for your time and for sharing your insights and tips with us. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, we do have uh, some questions. So I'm just going to uh, read you some of them. Um, hopefully we'll get around to as many as we can. Uh, unfortunately, we are limited in time. So please, uh, if we didn't get around to your question, we'll make sure to, to either answer it here afterwards or we'll get back to it in an email. But you can also always reach out to us and uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. So um, firstly, uh, we have a question here from Keith uh, asking, many consider 20 to 40 sessions on, on average. Um, I've seen this as well clinically. How do you then explain to patients that they need a full year of treatment or of training? Sure, the full year of training in, is really in the 40 to 50 session range. It's just spread across a year. So it's not, uh, like I told the patient yesterday, it's not more is more, it is, I tell everybody this, the way that you can shift a brain is the proper amount of training over the proper amount of time. So the real key to me is decreasing frequency so that you can make sure the brain isn't going to regress. And it goes back, there's videos, I have videos on my YouTube channel that would answer the question, but it goes back to when people have a dysregulated brain pattern, they are stuck in a negative feedback loop, which is scientifically proven to keep their brain pattern there. We need time and we need our trend graphs. You need to be able to analyze them so that you can make sure you're shifting the negative feedback loop to a positive feedback loop that will become a flywheel and stick there itself. And when that has been created, then the person's brain pattern will improve upon itself over time. So it's a very deliberate approach. And I know a lot of people don't um, approach neurofeedback in this way. And that's why MindLift has a very important role, especially at the outset of care where more frequency is more because you want to make that shift as fast as possible so that we can get them to the stabilization portion of the program where we're scaling neurofeedback back. Um, by then, most people love their home neurofeedback and want to keep that in the loop anyways because they feel it's their daily practice. But it's not, it's not like it's hundreds of sessions. It's in the 50 session range, 40, 50 sessions. Okay, great. Uh, thank you so much. We have uh, a question here from uh, Mikey uh, asking, how do, you, how do the results um, with your mind of system compare to your in-house or in-clinic uh, neurofeedback system? So this is a question I think uh, many people are interested. So it would be great to, to hear uh, how you can kind of uh, approach this. Definitely, and I'm very happy to answer that question. So when I do larger progress meetings, which I didn't really talk about, but there's larger progress meetings where I, my technician puts together a document that has the person's basically, just for sake of ease for thinking about it, their first graph and their most recent graph, and then sometimes a, a graph in between that is interesting. And I always talk about it tells the story of how this person's brain is shifting. That's why I always use the fourth and the last because I don't make up the story. I interpret the story using the graphs. But what we've done when people are in combination programs, we will literally put the first in-office graph and the first mind lift graph, the middle in-office graph, middle mind lift graph, and then the last of both of them. And you know, it's beautiful because it's a little different format, but it's almost the exact same that patients can understand it. And 
the changes that are happening are very, very similar. So I feel confident using those documents. If I didn't feel confident, I wouldn't be using MindLift as the reality. So like I'm literally putting these document these graphs side by side and sharing them with people. People can understand it and people are happy with their care. And just one quick story is this is an example of a mom who's traveling really far to come to my office because her son has really significant behavioral changes and his brain's basically off the charts for lack of a professional term, but he's really has significant needs, but he's come down so much, but his behavior's only changed minimally, but it's only been three months and she's committed to me and to herself to one year of mind lift. So we do our three month check in and she's like, you know, I'm not sure if I should keep going because I'm barely seeing anything here and, you know, it costs me money. And I shared those graphs with her and she's like, wow, I can see the changes that are happening. And you're right. I committed to one year of this and I understand he has big needs. I'm going to keep going. And, you know, it that's a game changer. Me having to try to convince someone to stay in care. I won't do, but I will use science to show them where the benefits are. Right. Okay. Um, thank you again. Um, okay. So our next question that we're going to ask you is um, we have people kind of interested in uh, if you've been using your feedback for uh, Parkinson's. We also have uh, someone asking about tinnitus um, and vertigo. So if you could kind of touch on those, uh, those and discuss the efficacy, that would be really great. Sure. So an easy um, way for you to learn more about that is my website at Lee Brain and Spine, my office's website, um, every word on it I've written. So please don't be too constructive. But the reason I'm sharing that with you is because basically each page says Parkinson's disease is proven to be an irregular, dysregulated brain pattern. This is what the brain pattern is. And then there's a link to one scientific article, at least one, um, uh, on the science tab on my website that shows what the science is behind Parkinson's. And the same thing for tinnitus and the same thing for many, many challenges. And that's a major thing I'm trying to communicate with you all today is that problems that people have are brain-based problems with irregular brain patterns. And once you understand that, you can so confidently interact with a person with Parkinson's and say, this is the brain pattern that is proven to create and perpetuate Parkinson's disease. This is how I'm going to change that brain pattern. I'm going to help you change that brain pattern using neurofeedback and mind lift. So like, for example, most of the brain patterns tend to be too much slow or extra slow brain processing speeds, delta and theta. And in Parkinson's, that's what it is in the motor planning vortices of the brain. So when you improve the speed of those areas, motor functioning comes back online. And there's not a ton of science, but the science shows that for the people who use neurofeedback, the majority of them, and I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's such a strong, large percentage of the people who did it got better. So it's so effective for the people who've done it. So if you wanna look at the science, I have it there and you can check that out but there's brain patterns behind these challenges that are proven to be able to be optimized. Okay, great. Thank you, Trish. Uh, that's really, really great. And uh, you've, you've uh, given a, a link earlier to uh, your website, so feel free to go check it out over there. Um, okay, our next question here is uh, from Ashley. Um, and she's asking, are you a mental health licensed uh, practitioner? If so, how do you address liability concerns about providing mental health treatment, uh, for example, for anxiety and depression remotely? That's a great question, which I, I am not. So I am licensed as a speech language pathologist, believe it or not. I started as a speech pathologist and I have two PhDs, neither of which have a license associated with it. But as a speech language pathologist, I'm able to become board certified in neurofeedback. My husband's a chiropractor. That is another area. So like if you've gone on the biofeedback certification international alliance webpage, you, website, you'll see the different licenses that are able to become board certified. And honestly, that's what my first point about who you serve 
was delving into. And just before I forget to tell you, we also have a licensed psychologist on our team. And we also have a licensed massage therapist for people who we serve with pain, even though my husband's license covers all that. So we have a team of people with different licenses, so we can cover um, more areas, but I will tell you, so you need to look at your license and see what your license says first and foremost about, but so the way I use a filter is as a speech language pathologist, who am I able to serve no matter what I'm using? So that should be your first filter. You look at who you can serve no matter what modality you're using. Those are the people that you can serve under your license, no matter what you're using. So then you are able to use neurofeedback to serve those people. In terms of remote neurofeedback, you do need to think about your license and what it says about computer-assisted therapies and remote therapies. And licenses are different by state. So, and actually I help people in my consulting practice because this is something that haunts a lot of people. Um, so I have become skilled at looking up licenses across all the different states and the different practitioners and being able to look into a person's license and be able to say this, that, and the other thing that you're able to use QEG brain mapping, you're able to use neurofeedback. So I would encourage you to do that, to go into your license document and look and see what it says you can do in terms of evaluations and what you can do in terms of in office care and remote care. It's different for states, it's different for countries, it's different for practitioners. Okay, um, I think we're only gonna uh, take one more question for now. Um, so again, I just wanna say if we didn't cover your questions, we'll get, we'll get to them, so don't worry. Um, but we have a question here um, from Keith asking, do your patients make monthly payments to you or is there a third party uh, financing you utilize? Um, they do, and I meant to share that with you, but I also didn't want to. Being a college professor for so long, uh, you know, <laughs> Tip number one is you never go 25 minutes over class time. Nobody appreciates it as much as they enjoy the information. But we do. We charge $500 and then we draft our patients' payments. So depending on what day of the month that they signed on for care with us, we either draft them on the 1st or the 15th of the month. And that way they know what day is their draft day and my just my patient liaison does it through our our credit card system which can save people's payment information so it's very easy she has it saved for whose drafts come out on the first and the 15th and honestly in my background i didn't really have time to share with you but i've owned many businesses across my lifetime believe it or not i've owned three restaurants that were very profitable my husband and i own gyms fitness facilities and in a fitness facility, if you've ever joined one, you know that usually your draft comes out on the 1st or the 15th. And the reason that happens is because if you don't go to the gym, you still get drafted. So it is a strong business model. We do have a policy that if we see someone is not utilizing MindLift or they have low frequency of sessions, we call them because we want people engaged in care. We don't want people, we don't want to draft them and have them never go to the gym. But um, that's how we do it. So we draft on the 1st and 15th. And as a business model, it's a strong one because I know how much money I'm going to make on the 15th next month already. People are in contracts, but you'll see me use air quotes for a lot of things. I never keep a person in care if they don't want to stay in care. This is really important. What I was trying to share before is we transition people down to lower levels of care. So we have different levels of services. So if they don't want to stay in their year long contract, if they live close by, then we have a four pack of in office sessions. Um, I also offer brain health coaching service. Not that I want to do that that much, but we have ways of people, keeping people in care. So they're not in the wind, but also releasing them for, from a contract that feels too big for them. Great. Um, so that was our last question. Um, let me just go back to me. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lee. That was really, again, I'm just going to say it was very, very informative, uh, very insightful. Um, and thank you for taking the time also to answer the questions. Um, again, uh, any other questions that we haven't yet gotten to, we'll get to them either on the chat or we'll uh, be in touch via email. 
Um, but I'm quickly going to share my screen, so give me a moment. Okay, so just uh, to end off, um, I just want to let anyone who uh, is not a mind of condition already and is interested in becoming one, you can learn more by scheduling a demo with us. Uh, go to our website. You can see our website over here. Um, and if you are a, a mind of condition, you're interested in answering, uh, you know, you have any questions and you want to schedule a consultation, um, feel free to, to be in touch with us uh, at support at MindLift. Um, and also, as you know, you have my email address, so feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all. Okay, so just uh, to thank you all for being with us today um, and have a wonderful rest of the day and we'll be in touch soon. Thank you very much. Bye, thank you. Hi, Trish, thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>